Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. Are you ready to wait another fun three months before the SEC v. Ripple lawsuit concludes? And when I say conclude, I just mean uh, Judge Torres issuing a ruling on summary judgment. I understand, of course, it'd be appeal, so on and so forth. Uh, are you ready to wait another fun three months? Because it just, why would you want it? Why would you ever want it to end? It's kind of like going to an amusement park. And just you, you wait in line for like an hour to go on the coaster. But then when you get to the part where you get to ride the coaster, you're like, but the line's been so fun. Why would I want to ride the actual coaster? That, that's where I'm at right now with this. Are you? I'm ready to, I want to keep waiting and waiting and waiting forever. And the good news is at this point, that's what it feels like it's going to happen. So like, I'm going to share with you some of the most recent perspective from attorney John Deaton. And unfortunately delivering some not so fun news, but real news. So I appreciate it, of course, that we may be waiting another three months or so, potentially more. And he has articulated why. And I also want to correct a crypto media article that says that he made a prediction of the end date, which quite literally is not true. But as you know, at this point, it's a bunch of C students that run these damn crypto media outlets. So it's just, you know, is what it is. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so here's a brand spanking new article from the Crypto Basic titled Deaton Predicts New End Date for SEC v. Ripple Lawsuit Explains Why Case is Taking Too Long. Now, the problem right there, as I alluded to just a moment ago, is that Deaton did not pre predict an end date for the SEC v. Ripple case. Let me explain. Let's jump into the piece. As the cryptocurrency community anticipates the summary judgment decision in the SEC v. Ripple case, pro-XRP lawyer John Deaton has made fresh, fresh speculation regarding when the ruling might come. In a crypto law broadcast yesterday, attorney Deaton speculated that Judge Annalisa Torres might issue the ruling on September 6, 2023. Got to pause right there. He literally did not speculate that, that it might happen specifically on that day. There was no prediction. He didn't say that it would happen on the day. He was talking about a range of time for which, if Judge Torres operates as she has in the past, you might expect that a conclusion could come during that time period. It wasn't even a prediction. It's just saying if Torres behaves as she did in the past. He didn't say that he believes that she will. He didn't say anything. <laughs> That's it's just it's not the case. Uh, anyway, peace continues. According to Deaton, Judge Torres historically issues her decisions on summary judgment within a few months of her rulings on the Daubert slash expert motions. As evidenced in Judge Torres's previous cases, there was a scenario where she released her summary judgment decision on the same day as her Daubert ruling. Furthermore, Deaton said there were also times after Judge Torres ruled on the Daubert motions, it took about two to six months before she released the summary judgment. Right, so if, if, if you are talking about one end of the spectrum to the other, after a Daubert a decision, which again, we got at the beginning part of March this year, so that was the stuff having to do with the expert witnesses in which the SEC had a really bad day and Ripple had a really good day and everybody in the XRP community was very happy because... Judge wasn't having some of the nonsense that the SEC was trying to spew out regarding the expert witnesses. So you can go from one end of the spectrum to the other, where on that same day, uh, it's not just the Daubert motion that is released, but the actual decision on summary judgment. But on the flip side, if you look at uh, how long it's taken for her from that point in time, uh, six months. And so we're, we're not at that six month mark, month mark yet. We're only a few months out, actually. We're a little over, it's called about, what, three and a half months now since the, the Daubert ruling. Uh, although there is more to it than that. There's another reason that there's, it's actually, I think, pretty likely that we're not going to be going past September, although nothing's guaranteed. But um, anyway, peace continues. Using the six-month time frame and Judge Torres' ruling on the Daubert motion in the Ripple lawsuit on March 6th, Deaton speculated that the summary judgment might come on September 6th. And again, that's literally not true. He was talking about a range. He didn't say it would be on that date. That just happens to be the later part of the date range. That's it. That's it. But here's a quote. There was a case that she decided where her summary judgment decision came six months after her Daubert decision. So six months from her Daubert decision, if it were on March 6th, would be September 6th, end quote. Yeah, so that's not him making a prediction. That's just, an, that's him observing something. That's what that is. 
Peace continues. Notably, Deaton said his comment on the possible ruling timeline dispels the rumor that the SEC v. Ripple case is taking any longer than every other case she has presided over. Yeah, and I've talked about that enough yesterday about the reasons why. Um, I'll add a little bit in this video because they, they did bring up a couple points I hadn't cited, but I'm mostly going to stay away from that topic because I don't want to get, I feel like I've exhausted it almost, almost, not literally. But, um, but so here's the thing. So there's that date range, but that's not the only reason. So, yes, if you look at what's normal for Judge Torres, uh, you know, on, on the longer end, yes, you'd be looking at that September 6th date. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, it would be unreasonable if to some degree it went a little past that. This is, if not the most, then one of the most controversial cases, highly consequential cases that she ever has or ever will rule on. You know, it's unquestionably, I mean, in terms of the biggest suit that the SEC has brought that's a non-fraud case, it's the biggest in decades. I think it'd be pretty hard to dispute that at this point. So there's that. And so if it does go longer and just given the, the number of documents, so on and so forth, yeah, I, I, I get it. There's a lot to go through. But there's another reason. There, I can't remember what the name of this is off the top of my head, but there's something in place that Congress has set in place uh, that requires a federal judge to report to Congress if they have not uh, decided a case uh, w within a particular time period. And it, it's so as a result of that, and, and when those deadlines fall, it wouldn't be September 6th. It would be the end of, uh, of September. Uh, that's what Attorney Deaton said, said yesterday. It would be September 30th then. So if she hasn't, if she hasn't, uh, d decided regarding the motions for summary judgment from the SEC and Ripple by the end of September, so just over three months away, she has to report to Congress, by law, she has to report to Congress that she has not concluded that. And it, it doesn't mean that they're literally forcing her to make it an immediate decision. The purpose of this is to, to basically publicly shame judges that are taking too long. That's effectively it, in a nutshell. Now, Judge Torres, as, as was noted by Attorney Deaton, Judge Torres has never been on that list. And he's, he's speculating that she probably doesn't want to be on that list. So if she's going to avoid being on that list, we are going to have a decision before the end of September. So I hope that happens. That's reasonable speculation. I'm just saying that Attorney Deaton did not actually predict that there, what the actual end date would be. Would be. He's just noting, here's the behavior that we've seen from Judge Torres. Uh, here's another consideration with, hey, you have to tell on yourself to Congress if you don't do your job in a timely manner. That's pretty much it. So probably we're going to have the decision by then. It's just unfortunate, and maybe we should, in, in hindsight, maybe we should have expected it to be more on the longer side, just given the gravity of the situation and like the pure volume of documents that have been submitted. Maybe we should have speculated that, okay, this wouldn't be the average of how long it takes Judge Torres. It would probably be on the longer end or the longest case ever because of the quantity of documents. Maybe we should have been thinking along those lines in hindsight, but that's that's hindsight, you know, you see 2020. Um, but, but there's a couple other interesting things I wanted to highlight here, too. Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, Attorney Deaton. So according to, to Deaton, Judge Torres understands that the Ripple lawsuit is one of great magnitude. Attorney Deaton added that Judge Torres knows thousands of people, including appellate courts, will look at her summary judgment decision in the Ripple case. Furthermore, Judge Torres has 500 open cases to decide on. And Deaton said, quote, how many cases does Judge Torres have? Well, I checked this morning, and she has over 500 open cases, and 44 of those are criminal cases, end quote. And I'll tell you, not having any sort of legal background, um, prior to the SEC v. Ripple, law, uh, SEC v. Ripple lawsuit, I had no earthly idea of the caseload that the typical uh, judge takes on, like at, at a district level like this. I had no idea. Over 500 cases? That is buck wild. Now imagine keeping that many cases straight. Whoa, <laughs> that is outrageous. And of course, you know, th this case is the most important to us, but to everybody that's participating in all those cases, that's the most important case to them, and they all want that done. They, they all want that tended to first. And that's a, a point, and I'm paraphrasing here, but that's, that's a point that Attorney Deaton was making the other day too. Anyway, uh, peace continues. Furthermore, Deaton said that Torres has to go through hundreds and thousands of pages from Ripple and SEC filings. Quote, Ripple filed a summary judgment motion. SEC filed a summary judgment motion. So each side filed a ceremony, 
Judgment Motion. Of course, they meant summary, but this is Crypto Media C students writing this, so they wrote Ceremony Judgment Motion. I'm just look, I'm just saying, like, after you write an article, Crypto Media people, just, just maybe give it a once-over. Just give it a once-over. Have a friend read it. See if there's anything that doesn't make sense. Just say. Anyway, quote continues. Then each side objects to the other side's summary judgment motion, and then each side gets a reply to the other side's objection to each side's summary judgment motion. See how complex this can get now that you have summary judgment uh, motion for Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, so many judgments on behalf of the SEC and so many judgments on behalf of Ripple. So each one of those briefs is over 50 pages. So you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of pages of just the arguments that need to be gone through. End quote. Yeah, and so that's why, as I've been pointing out for a long time, there's the fact that it's taken this long is shouldn't be that surprising or peculiar, and it doesn't mean that there's anything nefarious going on. It doesn't mean there's ill intent. That's weird fantasy land conspiracy theory speculation stuff that I'm just not into. I'm just I just I just think it's I think it's nonsense. I really I, nothing against the people that believe these things or spout them. Uh, not nothing against them as people. I think that the ideas are bad ideas that don't make sense because they're extreme. And there's literally no, no evidence whatsoever. In fact, there's evidence to the contrary. If you look behaviorally, how Judge Torres has um, been handling this case, very even keeled at a minimum. Although I'd argue that you look at all the pretrial stuff. I mean, it, 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 it to whatever degree, it favors Ripple. And as, as a result, XRP holders. I just, I don't see it. And then let an attorney Deaton in. She didn't have to let attorney Deaton in this case. She was well within her right to not allow Deaton in representing ultimately about 76,000 XRP holders. Come on. There's, there's, there's no weird conspiracy thing on there. There's, there's no evidence for it. So anyway, are you ready to wait? I'll start on the video like I started. You ready to wait another three months to have the conclusion of this case here? We may not have much of a choice. Now, we could have a happy surprise, and it could just end sooner. But uh, I, I just... I'd be as surprised as the next person if this weren't complete by the end of September. I'll just say that. Let me know what you think, though. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.